Good afternoon. Today we will be presenting our skills demonstration. Please enjoy this multimedia presentation using the recommended steps model by Rebecca Allen and Elizabeth Sorrell. Ethical dilemma. Mrs. Powers, a correctional social worker, is two years away from retirement with the state and is eligible to receive full benefits upon her retirement. She has recently been reassigned to work on a multidisciplinary team. The team includes a psychologist, a nurse, a psychiatrist, and a social worker. The team's objective is to return mentally ill prisoners on death row to a state of competency so that they may be illegally executed. This could pose a problem because Mrs. Powers needs to think about what are the highest interests and rights of the client, which is the prisoner, and what are the limits that a social worker has to society? The possible role of a social worker in this scenario is mixed. In order to resolve this dilemma, Mrs. Powers should be an advocate for the mentally ill inmates, ensuring that they are treated properly and not discriminated against by others on the team. Her role as an advocate is to be the voice for inmates that have not yet been returned to competency and to guarantee their immediate needs are met. Mrs. Powers also has the duty of taking on the role of educator, not just for the client, but for the team she is a part of. It is her responsibility to the client to make certain that all members of the team understand the inmates' rights and the laws regarding mental illness and the death penalty in Texas. Mrs. Powers will need to educate her team on human dignity and other social work values that she must follow and encourage them to follow these values as well. It is important that the inmates be seen and treated humanely by the team, regardless of the death row sentence they have. The social worker may also find that she needs to work as a case manager in order to link the inmate to certain services he or she may need. Because the inmate may not be in the right state of mind and lack the ability, skills, or knowledge, it is the social worker's task to assess the needs of the inmate, arrange and coordinate the delivery of services or goods, and to guarantee that these goods are delivered in a timely manner. If Mrs. Powers fails to sensitize her team members to a more holistic approach of returning these inmates to a competency and simply ignores her own code of ethics in order to not stir the pot and retire on time with full benefits, she is provoking mistreatment of these inmates and denying them basic human dignity and rights. Core principles and competing issues. So the first value that we have is social justice. The ethical principle attached states that social workers challenge social injustice. The social worker pursues social change, particularly with and on behalf of vulnerable and oppressed individuals and groups of people. So the social worker should ensure that, the, that those diagnosing the client and helping to assist restore the client's competency have the client's best interest in mind. Um, due to this patient being mentally ill, the social worker should ensure that this patient is not being abused, neglected, or exploited. The next value we have is service. Um, the social worker's primary goal is to help people in need and to ad address social issues. Um, in the case that we are studying, the social worker should make sure that the client is getting fair treatment. Um, this particular client is on death row, so any changes that are being made um, are more likely to be more serious changes. And the social worker should make sure that no one on the team holds any biases and that they are there to provide the client with the best mental health treatment possible. Next is the importance of human relationships. Social workers recognize the central importance of human relationships. The social workers are continuously aware of professional missions, values, and ethical principles. Um, the social worker should ensure that members of the multidisciplinary team are working together, being professional, 
and of course they're making sure that the client's best interests are kept in mind when it comes to decision making. Factors like is the patient taking the correct medications, the correct doses of medications, are they in therapies, groups, etc. should be taken seriously by the social worker. Um, next we have integrity. The social worker should behave in a trustworthy manner. Um, I look at it as the golden rule. You treat people the way you should be. You would want to be treated, or to be doing things that not necessarily people would think you'd be doing when people are not looking. And the social worker should make sure that they are making the right decisions on behalf of the client, regardless of who is around. The social worker should ensure that all uh, policies, laws, and standards are kept up to date in regards to the patient. Next, we have competence. The social worker practices within their areas of competence and develops and enhances their professional expertise. Um, the social worker should maintain knowledge about the client and the client's case, policies, laws, etc. The social worker should stay within the social work boundaries and practices. Um, it may be easy for the social worker to learn other roles within the multidisciplinary team, but ethically, the social worker should stay within the guidelines of social work. Um, next, we have the dignity and worth of a person. The social worker respects the inherent dignity and worth of a person. Um, we treat the clients with respect. Um, even though that the client has previous crimes, crimes, mental health status, or the fact that they will be executed, the client still should be treated with respect. It may be easy for one to judge and to lose sight of the, big, the bigger picture, but the social worker should always remain ethical. Because the objective of the prison is first to the safety of society and not to the individual inmate, and the main objective of the social worker is to the rights of the individual and then to society, this can pose several practice issues. One of these issues being ignoring certain ethical values and principles in the NASW Code of Ethics. Since the decisions made by the team could be dominated by other professions, it is possible that the ethical value of dignity and worth of a person is ignored. Though the social worker must abide by this value and treat the inmate regardless of the crime committed with respect, the others on the team may not, and this could pressure the social worker to ignore this value as well. Two other social work values that may be violated is service and social justice. Due to the potential bias and feelings of contempt one may have toward the inmates who have committed serious and often heinous crimes, the social worker may lose sight of what proper service should be and how these inmates deserve to be treated. It is important that the social worker not forget that the inmate has a right to fair diagnosis and proper mental health treatment. The final value that may be violated in this scenario is the integrity of the social worker. Because she may feel pressured by the prison or her teammates to rush an execution due to the publicity the facility is receiving on that case and desires of greater society to execute the inmate. Mrs. Powers may feel obligated to sign off on competency when the individual has not actually reached this goal. Laws and regulations, the death penalty in Texas. Um, so you have to be convicted of a capital felony crime. The definition is that you intentionally or knowingly cause the death of an individual, and it's usually under a special circumstances. And examples of that would be um, the killing of a firefighter or a police officer in the line of duty, killing a judge, killing a person under the age of six, and killing someone in the midst of another crime. There are five methods of execution in the United States, and they can do that through lethal injection, execution, lethal gas, hanging, or using the firing squad. Um, but there is a little um, discrepancy with that law, and it is under the measure defendants who have active 
psychotic symptoms of certain mental illnesses at the time of the crime, they are ineligible for capital punishment. And those diagnoses um, include bipolar, schizoaffective disorder, and schizophrenia. In this case, the social worker should advocate for the client during the restoration of the competency process. The client's best interest should be kept in mind and the social worker should ensure that the client is indeed competent before the execution begins. Using the recommended steps model, Mrs. Powers can resolve this ethical dilemma by identifying what the potential problem dilemma is and gather as much information as possible about the problem from many different perspectives. This could include lawyers, colleagues, team members, and supervisors, as well as the inmates themselves. She should determine core principles and competing issues that may be faced working with this population and in a team environment. She should review relevant codes of ethics, not only for social workers, but also for psychologists, psychiatrists, and nurses on her team to become familiar with how these individuals should act and what values and principles may interfere with one another. She should review laws and regulations regarding mental status of inmates and in execution, consult with supervisors once again, and legal staff to ensure that these laws are understood by her. Consider possible courses of action and consequences of the options. Choose the course of action to be taken. In this case, Mrs. Powers should do her best to uphold the ethical standards of social work by advocating and intervening when necessary for the inmate with the goal of returning the inmate to full competency before execution. She should develop a strategy for implementing this choice reading and staying up to date on the laws, as well as requesting supervisory advice, despite her years of experience, may help her in staying ethical. And finally, she should evaluate the process and results and determine if the intended outcome was achieved. Consultation. The social worker is working in a part of a multidisciplinary team they are working with individuals such as providers, nurses, and therapists. The social worker is um, working with other social service members and professionals. Um, the social worker needs to be a team player because others may have better ideas. The social worker needs to be able to work good with others. Um, they also need to be able to report team members if needed for abuse and neglect. And when in doubt, always check with your supervisor. Positive actions and consequences. Now consequences are not always a bad thing. The social workers should be following the code of ethics and should make sure that the rest of the multidisciplinary team members are as well. Um, this patient has a better chance of success when the team is on the same page and is working well together. The client would be able to be, to legally be able to complete their punishment um, by the social worker acting in an ethical manner, the client's um, competency more likely will be legally restored. And also, if the social worker is acting in ethical is acting in a ethical manner, the social worker would not lose their job or their license. Next, I would like to discuss different strategies. Um, the social worker should meet with members of the team either weekly or bi-weekly. Uh, meeting with the team before meeting with the client can ensure that the team is all on the same page. Um, the client should be receiving adequate mental health treatment. The client should be taking medications for mental health. The client should also be receiving therapies to help cope with this uh, situation. Biases should also be left aside. Um, of course, 
the I already said that the client should be receiving therapy, but also we should consult with the supervision if it is needed. We should also be making sure to ensure a thousand percent that the inmate is competent before execution. And if the client is not competent at the time of execution, the social worker should be advocating for the client. Negative actions and consequences, and these consequences are going to be negative consequences. So in this scenario, the social worker hypothetically could not be ethical, which could lead to the client being executed before competency is found. Um, if the social worker acts unethically with the client, the client can be harmed both mentally, physically, and psychologically. The, client, or the social worker may be biased and take advantage of the patient due to the patient being mentally ill or on death row. And the social worker could be making decisions on behalf of the client that aren't in the patient's best um, interest in mind. Also, if the social worker does not report any abuse or neglect of the patient done by any members of the team, the patient is being harmed. Um, social workers are mandated reporters in such serious situations, if social worker sees any um, neglect or abuse of a patient, it should be reported. And lastly, the social worker ult ultimately could lose their license and their job. And I mean, if they're working unethically, unethically, that is probably the best option. Alternatively, Another way to solve this particular dilemma is by refusing the position in the first place. If Mrs. Powers does not feel comfortable with this task or knows that she will not or cannot be ethical all the time while performing this role, she should inform her superiors and request a different placement within the prison. Even if this may jeopardize her retirement, it is much better to remove yourself from a situation in which you cannot be ethical. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening and you can view our resources below.